Yo, yo, what's up? CJ Harris here with the Moto Stop Show. We're back in our studio with Big Deal Productions. It's so glad to be back home here, coming to you with all the greatest equipment, the best stuff we can have. We got a killer show coming up for you guys tonight. Uh, guests call in. We're going to have uh, Justin Starling on with a great ride. New team. We're going to catch up with Starling and see what's been going on with the Florida boy. We also got a lot to talk about with Oakland just wrapping up. I thought that we seen the best race the week before at Glendale, but uh, man, was I amazed and surprised by what happened and went down at Oakland Supercross. Uh, the track was rough, the track was gnarly, but some people shined through and uh, made their way from the back of the pack to the front. Um, so we're going to break that down. We're going to talk about the 250, we're going to talk about the 450 class. We're also going to look forward to Dallas. We're going back to Dallas, Arlington, Texas, right there in the home of the Cowboys, the Dome. Should be a good time. Uh, weather's not going to be a factor because they can close the roof and uh, it should be a dry racetrack. Hopefully they build some really good obstacles. I'm looking forward to watching the race in action this weekend at Dallas. So let's, um, let's just move on. We'll start talking about the 250s. Uh, we'll break it down. Justin Hill put in a phenomenal ride in Oakland. So the track was a little uh, weather factor. It got deep. It was rutted. It, uh, it was everything we didn't want it to be, but then it turned out to every, be everything we wanted it to be. And what I mean by that, it made the pros look like rookies out there. So it turned the best riders in the world to look like the average riders on a full-blown supercross track, cross-rutting, not being able to jump the triples, a straight boner air up and jumping, you know, not scrubbing. It, it was like old-school racing brought back, which uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. I loved watching it. Probably watched the race three or four times already. Um, coming out of the gate, swinging, Justin Hill, you know, got up to the front really fast. Looked like he had that thing wide open, a great lead, uh, probably 15 seconds at one point in time. And if you guys watched the race on TV, there was, uh, after this rhythm section, there was a inside rut that everybody was taking. Well, Hill goes inside that inside rut and catches a wood piece. I guess it was a big wood piece that uh, came up, surfaced from the bottom. You know, they, when they go to these stadiums and stuff, they actually lay wood down on the ground. They cover full of dirt to make it easy when they pick up. Well, I guess this was like a four by four that they had put down in there. And he, he literally got his front tire around it. He didn't see it, but when his back tire hit, it kicked him out and just made him, you know, pretty much low side in the air, drop down. And if you haven't seen this, make sure you Google this accident because it, it was pretty crazy. He falls down on his right shoulder. As he falls down, the throttle on that Pro Circuit Kawasaki gets pinned wide open and it starts doing like a buck and bronco bull on the ground, starts spinning around, and he's, you know, luckily has enough thought to grab the clutch, pull it in to stop the momentum of that bike. If he didn't do that, one of two things could have happened. One, that bike could have came around and really seriously hurt him. Two, it could have stalled. If he stalled that bike, we're talking about a completely different race. Um, you know, with Davalos in second place, uh, looking pretty consistent, he actually caught up pretty close when he was on the ground. So that bike stalls on Hill. Davalos takes over. Does that give Davalos the confidence from there on out in the series? Or, you know, did Hill have enough time to come back? I think what would have happened, and here's, I'll give you why I'm assuming this. If Davalos got it, I think it might have mentally broke Hill for this one race. Because as that, when he got back up, got back on his bike, he wanted to get that lead back so bad that next lap or two, he made about 10 mistakes uh, that really cost him. And those mistakes aren't, the normal mistakes that a normal rider was, gonna, was making out there on that track. He, he was all over the place. After he settled down, he went back to riding like he did in the first opening, you know, laps and started gapping uh, Marty Davalos again, but it almost cost him. So I think if the bike would have stalled, Marty Davalos passed him, we were looking at a completely different outcome, obviously, with somebody else winning, but, uh, you know, it becomes a mental game from there on out. So talking about second place, we got Marty Davalos coming in second place there with a solid ride. Um, best performance out of him for the year in that third place. Shane McElrath, solid guy. Uh, you know, what impresses me by Shane McElrath is 
his ability to come out this series and ride like he's never rode before, not only on, you know, nice tracks, Anaheim won, um, big long straightaways last weekend at Glendale with tricky rhythm sections, but when the tough get going, he got it going. He had that KTM dialed in, even in the, the ruts, the stuff. So it's a lot like Ryan Dungey, you know, if your worst day is a third, that's how you win championships. So with uh, Shane McElrath rounding out the podium in our top three places, you got Jimmy Dakotas coming in fourth place, a solid ride by Filthy Phil Nicoletti. In the fifth place, um, Aaron Plessinger coming through with uh, a sixth place. Now, solid ride by Aaron Plessinger, but almost disheartening. I, I really feel like Aaron has the talent, the skill, and the ability to be charging and challenging for wins in this 250 class. And he's just not been able to pull it together. Now, the, the start has really hindered him. Uh, so maybe he'll be able to figure the starts out and get a little better starts. But he's got to put the whole thing together. AP's really got to get this dialed in. This was his track. Rutted, tough, crazy track. He should have did a little better. I'm kind of disappointed with it. Aaron Plessinger in sixth place. Um, in that seventh place ride, Kyle Chisholm. Another phenomenal ride by Chiz. A lot better than he's been doing. Uh, in the past rounds, and I think it's that experience, the rough track, the rutted, you know, his, his experience really shined. Another uh, boy who we're going to try to talk to here in a little bit, Mr. Justin Starlin, a boy from Florida. Really cool to watch this kid uh, progress. I call him a kid, he's not really a kid, but uh, to watch this young man progress, his skills are really starting to show through, coming through with a solid eighth place ride, his best finish of the year. Um, Justin also just switching, getting a ride over with uh, JMC Motorsports as well. You know, he had a good thing going, I believe, and, and hopefully we'll get him on the phone so we can talk to him and figure out, you know, why he decided to, to switch teams and what was going on with that. But, uh, yeah, a solid ride by Justin. In ninth place, we got Noah McConney. Tenth place, uh, Heath Harrison, the number 68. That's rounding out our top 10 in the 250 class. There was a lot of great racing action, a lot of bar banging. Um, this track is what we really call racing the track and really not so much the competition. Sometimes slowing down makes you go faster. And this was a prime case of what, you know, what you had to do. You, you couldn't race the competitor. You had to race the track. You had to hit your lines. You had to hit your marks. And I think we've really seen that in the 450 class, which we're going to dive into here in just a little bit. But the, I, I was a fan of Oakland. I think the, the complete track crew, Fell, Dirtworks, everybody did a phenomenal job keeping that track in shape, um, you know, making it safe for the riders, but making it challenging as well. So pretty cool. We're going to jump into the 450 class. And if you don't know, I'm going to go ahead and blow your mind. Eli Tomac is back. That dude came out with a ride. Man, again, Glendale. I thought it was the best race we were going to see all year round. What Eli Tomac did in Oakland was flawless. So I think comes off the start, he's roughly about eighth place, something like that. I don't have those in front of me, but somewhere back there. Um, has to make his way up to the front. You could have asked me, lap four or lap five, how it's going to win or how it's going to end out. I would have told you Cooper Webb's going to win. Cooper Webb in the first few laps was so good looking, so fast, looked very aggressive. Dungey out front. I thought what was going to happen was Cooper was going to catch Dungey and Dungey was going to settle for second on that gnarly track. But that's not happening. Cooper comes, Dungey feels the pressure, Dungey turns it on, winds out that KTM a little more and uh, gaps Cooper. Meanwhile, you got this freaking green rocket ship coming up from the back. Eli Tomac, somebody forgot to tell him that this track was rough, rutted, and you're supposed to take your time on it because he did the complete opposite. The dude held it pinned, wide open pretty much around everywhere. Um, came in, he had the, the one section dial where he was doing the triple quad. It, it was very cool to watch this race unfold. Comes around Cooper, makes the pass uh, around that start section where you come over the finish line. Got the left-hand corner, dives in, he makes a pass, but I think he could have still pulled the triple quad, 
I believe he goes, you know, it's not really safe. So he triples, doubles, makes a little mistake. Well, Cooper pulls the triple quad, sends it right past Eli Tomac. So, oh, damn. That pissed Cooper off. He's coming back. Tomac had it. Tomac grabs another handful of that Cali gas, runs it past Cooper, and then you're like, okay, he's in second place. He's probably going to settle in, ride this thing home, maybe make a charge at Dungey. He caught Dungey like that and dropped Dungey. Mind-blowing for me to see Eli Tomac make these drastic changes. I'm going to go on record and say, when the first few rounds came out, the way he was riding, I claimed that I thought he was sick. You know, the symptoms that he was showing, I thought he had Epstein-Barr. The rise that he's put in the last two, rides, last two rounds, I was a complete idiot because that kid is freaking phenomenal. So, uh, you know, he's not the Daytona Wonder right now. He's actually putting in nice, solid Supercross rides on a nice track, Glendale, on a sketchy track in Oakland. We're going to Dallas inside the Dome. What is ET3 going to bring? I think he's going to bring the heat on the Kawasaki. So uh, definitely looking forward to that. No discredit to Ryan Dungey. Second place. Still building his points lead. Um, doing what Dungey does, you know. So he's got a, a solid, I believe, 17 points lead right now. Cooper Webb. Phenomenal ride by Cooper Webb. They finally got that bike dialed in, figured out. I like what I'm seeing out of Cooper better and better and better. His career best in the 450 class puts it up on the podium for a third place position, third place uh, finish. So let's run down this, uh, this top 10 here. Jason Anderson coming in that fourth place position. Cole Seeley with a solid ride in the fifth place position. Davey Millsaps. Nice ride by Davey in the sixth place. Seventh place is going to go to Blake Baggett. Eighth place, Chad Reed. Little uh, Chad Reed was kind of like my um, Aaron Plessinger in the 250 class. Really surprised by that eighth place finish by Chad. I don't know if something happened in the race. I didn't really see. They didn't show much on TV, but uh, definitely better than that. And I think in the rutted situation, he he's kind of should have been like Aaron Plessinger with the experience, all the skill that that dude's got. I figured he would be a top five, even close to a podium. But uh, we'll see what he's got in, in Dallas next week as well. Marvin Muskan, ninth place. And uh, a solid top 10 for Dean Wilson. So that's going to be Dino's best finish of the year as well. Moving over to that uh, Husqvarna ride. So congratulations there. Uh, let's look down here. Michael Lessie, 15th. Vince Freeze in that 14th place. Um, big shout out to uh, Cade Clayson, 19th place. And our homie Adam Enton at the 7 Deuce Deuce in that 20th place. Uh, solid rides. Now we're going to look up. I want to look to see what the... Let's see what the track map is going to look like for Dallas. Walk you guys through this, uh, this track map here as it comes up. You know, they, they race in the... Um, the Dallas Dome, the Arlington, Texas is actually where it's at. And it is going to be amazing. Maybe I'm not going to pull the track map up. It still wants to give me Phoenix. We're not trying to look at Phoenix, are we? Ah, what the hell. Anyways, we'll move on from that. So, uh, you know what? Let's, uh, why don't we jump to this commercial break real quick? Hang out with us. we got a lot more coming up right after this. Check out this quick commercial. Hopefully we'll get Justin Starling on the line. We'll have the track map. Track map. Map. That. 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 Yeah. We're going to have some shit coming up as soon as we come back. Stay tuned. We'll see you here in just a little bit. Dude, I am starving. You guys want to go eat? Yeah, bro. Let's hit it. Let's roll out. People want to eat healthy. Larry's is the only sub shop that uses all natural and antibiotic free meats and cheeses on their subs and salads. Fresh, healthy, delicious. No matter how dirty you get, you can always eat clean. See you guys next week. All 
All right, welcome back. We hope you guys enjoyed that commercial. As always, thank you for following along. Thank you for enjoying what we do. As the Motostop Show comes to you 2017, we got a lot of new sponsors on board with us. We got to give a big shout out to HBD Moto Graphics. We got a shout out to Pro Action Suspension, Bobby Williams, as well as Everev coming on board with us. Breaking news right now to the Big, produc big Deal Production guys. They didn't even know this, but uh, a little something I tried to set up on the side. So uh, Everev coming to us um, and the Motostop. So Big Deal Production back in this event here. We're going to talk a little bit about Dallas Supercross, Dallas 2017. We're going to kick it off with the track map. Follow along as I take you a ride through my voice how the track's going to look. We're going to come out. We're going to drop out of the gate. It looks like we got a short start this week. We're going to make a left-hand corner. It's going to be a direct 90. You're going to have another little straightaway into another 90 degree. So uh, as you make the first 90 off the start, you're going to cut across two lanes of traffic, make another left, and you're going to go into a short rhythm section. Right hand ball corner, you're going to come back out into a rhythm section that's going to go the whole length of Arlington, Texas Stadium right there. As you come down to the other side, you make another right hand corner. It's going to be your first triple of the race. As you go over that triple, you're going to make a right hand corner. You're going to come into a 3-3 section. You're going to make a left hand corner and you're going to go into what it looks like it's going to be a three on and uh, probably single off maybe a quad double. We'll have to see what happens as it plays out. As you make a right-hand corner, you're going to go right into the finish line, and it looks like it's going to be a single tabletop, land, double into a corner. Pretty cool. I like the way they did that. Make a right-hand corner. You're going to go back down the star straight the way you normally would go. As you do that, you're going to come over. It looks like a little kicker bump, left hand, into your first set of whoops. You're going to make a right-hand section. Make a right-hand section. What the hell am I talking? You're going to make a right-hand turn, and you're going to go through another set of whoops, which looks like we'll have a camel or a dragon's back at the end. You'll double into a left-hand corner. You'll make that left hand, and that will put you right back to where you started. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this right here, but if you can, check it out. If not, uh, definitely make sure you check out supercrosslive.com. Track maps, it has all the tracks on there. So pretty cool to, to get a view of what this is going to look like before you actually go. So let's talk a little bit about 2016. So, woo, 2016, we're going to start off the 250 class. Uh, Cooper Webb, obviously he's not going to be a threat to the 250s, but does he have something for the 450s? Uh, Christian Craig put in a solid ride with a second place there. Zach Osborne, third place. Uh, Colt Nichols, fourth place finish. Mitchell Oldenburg, fifth place. Alex Martin got a sixth place finish. And Jimmy D coming out with seventh place position. That's last year, 2016. In your 450 class, Ken Roxon was your champion, your winner in 2016. Followed by Ryan Dungey, Jason Anderson, Cole Seeley, Eli Tomac, Marvin Muskin, Davey Millsap, Christoph Porcel, Trey Kennard, Jake Weimer. So with momentum, I would say I've got to put my money on Eli Tomac this weekend. The last two rides we've seen, something has clicked in that guy's head. He is phenomenal right now. He has the confidence. He's got the momentum. Obviously, his bike is working right. If he comes right to Dallas, Texas, Eli Tomac will have three wins in a row. The question will be, what unfolds behind him? What is Ryan Dungey going to do? Does Ryan Dungey step above, go above and beyond, really push the limits to try to stop the momentum of the Monster Energy and Kawasaki rider Eli Tomac? Does Cooper Webb push the envelope to get to that next spot for a win or even a second place? What is Jason Anderson? You know, Jason Anderson missed the race uh, two rounds ago with the incident with Freeze. We all seen it. Anger really has nothing to lose now. Does he come out and let it unleash? Chad Reed, the old wise man. Does Chad Reed come proper? Does he come to Dallas, Texas, ready to play? Does he put the Yamaha Racing back on the podium? I think Chad Reed can do it. Two sets of whoop with the dragon back up and over the, the straight there. So um, that could be a factor in this race. There's going to be a lot of things that come into play. The weather's not going to be a condition this weekend. 
it's going to come, the track should be prepped, the track should be dry, the track should be good. So as long as Dirt Works crew does a good job, we're going to see the best race of the year. We have all these guys that are pumped up, all this momentum coming in, whether it's the 250 class, Justin Hill battling out with Shane McElrath. Who's going to throw a wrench in there? Is Austin Forkner finally going to get himself a win on a dry track? He may could do that. Confidence has got, you know, he's got to build that confidence up. He's got to get better than a fourth place finish. Who is the unknown? Is Jimmy Dakota going to finally put it on the podium? We're going to find out this weekend. It's going to be a hot one. It's going to be good. Arlington, Texas coming proper. We cannot wait. I know I can't wait. We got the Florida Georgia Championship Banquet locally here in Florida that we're going to be attending. I got a host. So if you race the Florida Georgia Championship, make sure you come by Bosswood Creek for your free ride day and uh, see us. We're going to talk about it. We're going to go straight home, have a little super cross party at the Harris Compound, and uh, it should be really, really good. Unfortunately, we were not able to get uh, Starling on the phone. Sorry, I lost my train of thought right there. Um, I know he said he landed in Texas, so you may be checking into a hotel, still trying to get everything figured out. And uh, we'll try to get him back on, maybe check, check in with him after Dallas, Texas, and uh, see how that race goes, maybe with his greatest results of the year. You know, I really wanted to get uh, Starling on because he's got a lot of background that most people don't know. One of the most talented amateurs coming through the, the amateur ranks. He's won so many titles. I'm not going to spoil his time on a shine on the Motostop show, but once we get him on, he's going to tell all you guys about his past, some of the struggles that he's went through and the rest of it. So, um, you know, we'll try to get another pro on next week, somebody else from Dallas, Texas. We got a guy in mind. We'll see if we can work that out. But uh, we're going to wrap this show up. Hope you guys like it. Please make sure you guys subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit share. Make sure you check us out, themotostopshow.com, uh, Stitcher, iTunes, you name it, we got it. It's been fun. It's been real. We're going to see you guys right after Dallas Arlington Supercross. My name is CJ Harris. The host brings you the most. I'm out. Peace, bro.